off because I'm very small. Thank you very much. I just said if you don't lower it, um, I'm actually talking to a microphone instead of a Thank you all for being here. And on behalf of all of us, I would like to say thank you, South Africa. And I would like, in the spirit of all those who gave and fought and lost and won, to end apartheid, to end the corrupt state of an apartheid South Africa, endured and gave their lives. Steve Biko, Mandela, millions of others. Madiba, your children have done you proud. I don't want to repeat what has been said on your platform, what has been said week in, week out. We say it, we know it, we repeat it. But right there, in the seat of word, judicial power, never more eloquently has truth been spoken to power than the South African legal team spoke before the International Court of Justice. If the International Court of Justice cannot protect the children, the babies, the men, the women, the old, the young, those who are ill, infirm, living with disability, those being killed by the hour by the state of Israel, then it would need to go because there is no legal protection left for people oppressed against oppressive states. There is no legal option left for any of us if the court does not have the courage to call genocide for what it is. And if the member states who have signed the United Nations Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms, including Ireland, including the United States of America, including all the states of the European Union, and the United Kingdom no longer in it, nobody really misses them. <laughs> Couldn't miss the opportunity to have it. But all of those states are members of the United Nations. And if they cannot take peaceful economic sanctions against the state of Israel to prevent further genocide, further war, further bloodshed, then what is the point of the United Nations? And if we have no United Nations, and no United Nations Charter of Human Rights. And no World Court of the United Nations. What will save us from the next World War? What will save us from the next genocide? What will save us from the rise of fascism across the globe, which we are facing?
and Israel is the tip of the iceberg. Let me tell you, this is not, this is not Germany of the 1930s. This is the seminal battle against fascism that was lost in Spain. Because if we had won, if those who had stood against fascism when it raised its head in good old Catholic Spain, Germany and Hitler would never have been able to get as far as he did. Never. And if Israel is not stopped, if Israel is not stopped now, how will we stop the next one? That's the question Leo Baratker, Michal Martin, and Mary Lou MacDonald has to answer. Because she is a government in Britain. And we all know that. So Mary Lou needs to stand up to the plate now. right, believed what people told us all over the world, to find governments that lied to us once they were elected. So we need to see action now from those who would be government and would be bringing change. Because Palestine is the litmus test of our humanity. It is the litmus test of our country and it is the litmus test of our politics. Joe Biden is an enabler of genocide. Joe Biden overrides what democratic processes exist in the United States to personally sign off billions of dollars for the purpose of genocide in Gaza. on the national day of a country that freed itself from oppression would go to America and hand the bastard a bunch of fucking children. Yeah. But everybody can do something 
and you can determine what it is. I have small grandchildren who don't, don't, don't eat, never eat a McDonald's today. Yeah. Never friend in the end. I have a beloved sister with a learning disability. And the joy of her Saturday was Marks and Spencer's cafe. And she just before Yaz has said, we can't go back again. So everybody can do something. Because there are those us, I am not ashamed to say, I'm over 75. I'm over 50 years, 50 years, standing, 50 years, standing on platforms supporting Palestine. 50 years, it shouldn't have to be like that. But I will tell you this, again about this country, my generation, knows what oppression was like. My generation, and I see some northerners here, my generation, we know what it was like to be defined as a terrorist community. We know what it was like for a whole community to be defined as guilty and the only thing to be determined was specifically what we'd be punished for. And when something couldn't be thought of, we just all got punished anyway for opening our mouths or buying windows. Not Nothing that compares with what the people of Gaza have to endure. But the generations before us, on this side of the border, know what it was like to be an oppressed nation. How, how could we Martin forget? How could Leo Varadkar forget? How can anybody forget the history of this country? When the war of independence was fought here, it wasn't a lawful war. It would have been very, very difficult had somebody gone, while the black and tans were on the rampage here, to protect us at the United Nations court had one existed, to have argued that we had any standing as a state. We didn't. And no doubt those who are opposed to us will say they didn't mention Hamas. We're just the head of our life. I'm going to mention Hamas. <laughs> I'm going to mention Hezbollah. <laughs> I'm going to mention Houthis. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you like this. That the people define them. You know, every time we turn on the news, we talk about the Iran-backed terrorist organization, the Houthis. Uh, a UK definite, defined a uh, terrorist organization. They said every time with Hamas. Hamas, defined in the United Kingdom as a terrorist organization. And then they go on to Hezbollah. Hezbollah, uh, backed by Iran, supporting Hamas, and also defined by the UK as a terrorist organization. <laughs> Fear the fall used to be a friggin' terrorist
and Oscar Wilde might have said, and somebody said, you will, Oscar, you will. It wasn't me said that. It was the Sinn Féin Mayor of Cork when he died of hunger. So I say to the people of Palestine, we stand with you. As long as you endure and resist, we will endure and resist with you. And I say, as Conrad Pierce said to the state of Israel, and I say it to the government of Ireland, did you think to conquer the people? Did you think that your law was stronger than life and people's desire to be free? No. We will have it out with you. Ye that have bullied and bribed, ye who have tortured and broken, tyrants, hypocrites, liars, free Palestine.